Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Work Ready, Researching Your Ideal Job. My name is Ole Kagan, and I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator for LA County Library. And I welcome you once again here today if you are new to Work Ready or if you have been with us before. Work Ready is a program that's been running from December of 2020 and will run through December of this year and maybe a little bit past. The purpose of Work Ready is to help those affected by COVID get a job or those with a job to improve your work situation and plan a sustainable career path. We're doing that in three ways. Number one, we're lending out laptops and Wi-Fi hotspots, so computers and internet access out of 20 library locations for six week periods. The way to get a hold of one of those computers and hotspots is to go on our website, lacountylibrary.org, click on Work Ready, which is right in the middle of the screen there, and then check for laptop availability. You see, you, when you click on laptop availability, you'll see all the libraries where there are laptops currently available. It'll just say, go to the service desk. You can either call one of those libraries and have them set one aside for you, or just head straight over to the library. And if you're gonna be there, you know, pretty quickly, there will be a laptop available there for you. You just check it out like any other item in the library. You get it for six weeks and we'll send you a short survey right during the week that you check out the laptop so that you can give us a little bit of information about how we can serve you with Work Ready. The second way Work Ready is helping folks with jobs is by doing events just like this one. And we're gonna have five more events during the session and maybe we'll throw in a little more because we've got a lot of folks looking for jobs and we wanna help you out as much as possible. So we've got all sorts of live events and pre-recorded videos on our YouTube channel about different work-related topics. Finally, we've purchased the latest and greatest work-related books, eBooks, audiobooks, which can be accessed through our catalog. For physical books, you can place them on hold, have them sent to any of the libraries. They're all open. You can walk into any of our branches currently, or you can go on OverDrive and there's a whole a work ready collection you can check out an ebook and look at it right now although i don't recommend looking at it as we're doing this program but definitely afterward so with that i would like to introduce our speaker for today lauren smack is an adult services librarian with la county library specifically a makemo or maker mobile librarian so he brings science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, STEAM, to people ages five through infinity all over LA County. Lawrence travels to different library locations, schools, senior centers, Central Juvenile Hall, any location that we're asked to, Lawrence goes and presents about science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. But today, Lawrence will be presenting about researching your ideal job. And with that, I'm turning it over to you, Lawrence. Take it away. All right, thank you, Oleg. Uh, and good morning, everybody. Uh, just give me one second until I can share my presentation and we will get started. So we should, oh, we should do it now. All right, and can everybody see my screen? You're good. Some. All right, so welcome to the latest edition of Work Ready. And my name is Lawrence, and uh, I will be giving you some handy advice on researching your ideal job. And the premise is simple. When you feel like you want to start researching a job, but don't know exactly how to start doing that, or when you start getting overwhelmed by all the choices and information out there, what do you do? Well, we aim to give you a few different options to start with in this presentation by introducing you to several widely used resources so you can be on your way to fulfilling employment. And again, if you have any questions during the program, please share them with us in the chat on the right hand side of your screen. And uh, we will address those when we can. If you're ready, then let's get started. So first, let's take a look at what we have in the program description. So our program description has 
Intelligent research is vital for a successful job search and negotiation. Find actionable information such as salaries, job requirements, and company profiles to determine if a job is the right fit for you. And with that being said, there are two main concepts that stick out that are the overarching themes here. And that is from the terms research, which DYOR, do your own research, and actionable information, uh, leading to knowledge is power. So let's start with DYOR, which stands for do your own research. And that's a term which is pretty popular these days among traders. So people who buy and sell things like stocks. Um, they use it when people who are new to trading start asking questions about whatever it is they want to trade. Most people will be happy to give their opinions, but will almost always end the conversation or message with DYOR. And I personally really like this practice because it makes a person take responsibility for their subsequent actions and not solely rely on the opinions of others. That way they can't really blame others for subsequent negative consequences. Like for example, you're driving with a friend and you come to a fork in the road and your friend just says, oh, take the right hand side. I've used that before, it's great. Um, and so you take it, but what if the circumstances had changed? Like what if there was road construction going on and then you found out that, oh, you know, you took an extra 30 minutes to get to your destination. And so that's where this comes in. If your friend told you to go to the right, based on their previous experience, use trust, but verify. Do a quick search on Google Maps to make sure it's on the up and up. And if it is, then great. If it's not, you've done your research and you both uh, have gotten, have saved some time. And again, if you experience success, you can take confidence in the fact that this was a result of your own research and decision. And you can build off of that confidence to even greater success. So in short, for life-changing topics, such as finding a job, DYOR is highly recommended. And the natural next step of DYOR is knowledge is power. So the more information you have about something, the more informed of a decision that you can make. For example, again, if I gave you a choice between turning right and left right now, the chance that you would take one or the other would be about 50-50. But what if you learned that the left route was five miles longer and had construction delays? Then you'd probably save some time and gas if you chose the right-hand side instead. The same thing applies to choosing between a job. If both jobs appear to pay the same, but you learn that one job had better benefits or one company just had a very public scandal that might affect its business, you could use that information to make sure you ended up in the more advantageous position. And there's that metaphor for, or that's, there's that picture resembling the left and right paths and the fact that you should do your own research and that knowledge is power. So let's take a look at the resources that we're going to cover today. I'm going to start with some resources that you can access through our library website, such as CalJobs, the Occupational Outlook Handbook, and Business Insights Essentials. Then we'll broaden our sources to GuideStar, PayScale, and Glassdoor. Now the library actually has a few job and business related resources that you can access. There's quite a few. Many of them can be found through our Tools for Job Seekers page and Business Resources page. And you might, and you may need a library card to access that information. So let's go take a look at CalJobs, the first one. So I'm going to start on the library website, which is lacountylibrary.org. And if you don't already have a library card, you can sign up for one right here. Uh, just click get a library card and digital library card. It takes about 10 minutes and you'll be up and running and ready to access everything we have to offer. With that being said, let's go to resources and I'm going to go to tools for job seekers. And that's where our first uh, resource CalJobs is located. Okay, on the right hand side, you'll see that CalJobs is the very first link. 
All right. And once you do that, if you don't already have an account, it will prompt you to make an account before you can start using it. And it takes about 10 minutes. Um, it asks you a lot of questions to determine what your goals are, your interests. Uh, and from that, they can start recommending jobs for you. All right. So CalJobs is California's online resource to help job seekers and employers navigate the state's workforce services. So you can search for jobs, create resumes, find qualified candidates, and more. So I'm going to, um, again, please note that with CalJobs and many of the other platforms that I'll cover during this presentation, it will allow you to search for jobs and apply for them as well. So many of them can be a one-stop shop for the job application process. And you can go ahead and explore those options after this presentation. For our intents and purposes, which is to research and find actionable information about a job, I'm going to start with a job listing already in mind. And we're going to research this position throughout this presentation using the different resources and kind of build a profile based on that job. All right, so I'm going to go to my save jobs and I'm just going to scroll down to job posts I liked. All right, and I'm going to start here. So let's assume that I'm looking for a banker's position and I found this relationship banker listing from Bank of America. And it looks like a good listing. It's in LA, not too far from where I am and not too far from where I assume you are, and meets my needs as an introductory banking job that provides training as uh, put in the job description. See, from day one, you'll receive training. And if it passes the eye test, the job description, then let's take a deep dive into whether or not this job could be my ideal job. So on the CalJobs website, Again, I can immediately scroll down for some helpful links about the job. And also, I forgot to mention, you can also see some wage data and the job experience and skills data for similar jobs as well. If there isn't um, a posted salary, CalJobs and most of the other resources will give you an estimate of what, um, of what these jobs make as well. So I'm going to scroll down past the job description and you can see that there's some required skills and what duties you can look forward to and also maybe something about the company culture all right and also some desired skills as well and if i'm looking through all this information and it still looks fine right Below that, there's some employer research. So there's ways that you can connect with Bank of America through social media. You can take a look at some of the other jobs that are offered from this employer. Like for example, if you're looking for something closer to where you are. All right, and I'm going to continue going. Uh, education and training. Okay. And here I see that there's some skills required. So um, this will give you typical job skill requirements for this position. So not just for this specific one, but for um, jobs that, um, that are from similar employers. So you can see some common skills like answering customer or public inquiries, collecting fees, explaining some rules and policies, um, all right? And again, you can see uh, the technology skills used by new accounts clerks and personal skills. So you can identify those and see if you meet those or what skills you might need to brush up on. All right, and it gives you some occupation information as well. You can take a look at matching jobs, related jobs, and also like future employment outlook. But we'll cover that in a second with the occupational outlook handbook. All right. 
Now, one part of job searching that is often overlooked is doing research on the local labor market. And doing so will allow you to better know what the overall education requirements are, like the average working conditions and the average salary for a worker in the field. And this allows you to find out which listings provide more benefits and interview and negotiate from a position of strength. Now, the labor market services allows you to filter the market information based on area, industry, occupation, and education. So, to access that, I'm going to click on the menu here. And I'm going to scroll down to services for individuals and you'll see that it's under there labor market services. All right. And I can search for like industry profile, occupational profile, or education. I'm going to choose occupational. All right. And here I'm going to type in banker and see if that pops up. Okay. So there isn't a, an exact one for one match, but I remember seeing new accounts clerks also on that job listing. So I'm going to click on that and see exactly what information comes up. All right, so for new accounts clerks, I can see that advertised job skills. So you can see that about the top five um, job skills that they require, customer service, problem solving, cash handling, the top employers posting jobs in the area. So you can see Bank of America, Cathay Bank, East West Bank, uh, tools or technology that uh, you're required to use, like Word and PowerPoint, and also how to use an ATM, and also how many candidates there are per job opening. So you can see that there's 3.87 candidates per job opening. So there's some competition there. Uh, so keep that in mind uh, when you apply. And also it gives you some knowledge required, you know, uh, subjects that you might want to brush up on before the interview, and some abilities required, such as, uh, you know, verbal abilities and uh, speech and quantitative abilities as well. And also skills, such as um, collaboration with others. That's always very important for almost any uh, occupation out there. And also the work output and information input as well. Now, before I go on, I want to say that I know for some of you, this may be a lot to take in at first. It's a lot of information that takes time and effort to go through and analyze. And if you feel overwhelmed, make sure to take breaks during your research to avoid getting burned out. And write all of the data down on a piece of paper just to narrow your focus to what's on there to compare. And just take it slow and steady, go through it step by step. Now, we can also start in more general terms by taking a look at the big picture of the general field or occupation, and then we can slowly narrow our focus down to the nitty gritty details. That's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do next. So the next resource that we'll go over is the Occupational Outlook Handbook, and that's by the U.S. Department of Labor and Statistics. Ah, so I just went through CalJobs, and we're going to go through the Occupational Outlook Handbook now. So the handbook is published every two years by the US government and serves as a guide to the nature of work, the working conditions, training and education, earnings and job outlook for many different occupations in the United States. It's a very useful resource to learn not only about the hard numbers of an occupation, but also some of the trends involved as well. So again, we can find the link for this in the Tools for Job Seekers page. So back at Tools for Job Seekers, and I'm gonna look on the right-hand side, gonna scroll down until I see the Jobs and Employment box. Then I'm gonna click on the Occupational Outlook Handbook here. All right, so here's the home page, and you can find your occupation through this filter here, through median pay, through the entry edge level education uh, and the job training and also the growth rate, or you can take a look on the left and find your desired occupation through this group list here. So I'm taking a look and 
I don't see banks, but I know they're in the business and financial area. So I'm going to click on that and let's see what I find. All right. So, um, you'll see a list of related jobs and also a brief description, the minimum education requirement, and also the average salary for each occupation there. So um, I'm going to actually do a search now in the handbook. If you don't find what you're looking for, you can try to do a search and maybe that will get you closer to where you're to your goal. Okay, so it looks like they don't have banker, but they have something like personal financial advisors or actually financial analyst. Okay, so let's take a look at financial analyst and see what is. Hmm. So it looks like this one might not be the one you're looking for. Let's take another look and see if we can find. our uh, listing. Okay, so let's go with a loan officer because I know that they process, uh, bankers sometimes process loans. So let's take a look. So the median pay for 2020, you can see is about 63,000. You can take a look at the typical entry level education, work experience and related occupation, on the job training, the number of jobs, and also, the job outlook. So this is a really good feature of the occupational outlook handbook. You can see uh, their projected numbers for 2020 to 2030 that it will grow 1%, uh, which means little or no change in the field. So that means um, while the job numbers won't be decreasing, the job numbers won't be increasing as well. And that might uh, make the competition for the available jobs a little more um, a little higher. So in the summary, you can find the links to see what loan officers do, their work environment, and how to become a loan officer. So this is a good one. Um, if you're still looking to increase your education skills to meet the requirements, you can kind of see exactly what you need to do in order to qualify um, to become a loan officer. Okay, so you can see the type of training, licenses, certifications, and registrations, and some important qualities as well. All right, and for some more data on job outlook, you can see, um, so for all occupations, you can see the growth rate is about 8%. So the one we're looking at, financial specialists or loan officers, that's actually below average for the all occupation growth rate. So if that, might influence your decision um, on uh, on applying and getting a job that uh, you might take that into account when you build your profile. Okay. So after you found a suitable job listing and uh, you've looked up all the basics of the occupation and what it entails, you might wanna start researching the employer to find out more about it before you apply. And now we're going to narrow our focus down to the organizational level. So go back to here. Okay. If you plan on working with an organization long term, it might be helpful to find out details about that company, such as their financial situation and prospects in the coming years. And that's where Business Insights Essentials comes in. This is a database uh, that you can access through the library website. So, for example, a new employee who jumps on board a company that recently declared bankruptcy, like uh, Neyman Marcus last year or even Norwegian Air, they may find their career to be rather short-lived if the company suddenly decides to downsize and lay off a significant number of staff. So, finding out as much as you can about a company helps protect you by increasing the chances you find a suitable and stable employment position. All right? So. Let me show you how to access Business Insights Essentials. All right, so I'm going to start off on the library homepage. Then I'm going to go over to Resources. 
and then it will be right below tools for job seekers. It'll be in the business resources link, which I'm going to click. And then it should be the very first link under the business resources center. So when I click that, it will start to load. And it will ask you for your LA County library ID, which I will input now. And again, if you don't have one, you can sign up for a virtual one it takes 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, so now we'll start at the home page and you'll see several options. Um, here you can access like financial reports. You can compare companies and you can get some uh, detailed company and industry profiles. But the easiest way, if your prospective employer is a larger publicly traded company, chances are it's going to be in this database. So let me show you how to directly look for a company. Okay, so we're gonna go off our preferred job listing, uh, search for Bank of America. All right, and then I'm just going to click enter and we'll see our results start to load. And again, please note some large international corporations like Costco or Walmart, they've split their operations into several distinct corporate entities. So you want to make sure that you're selecting the correct one. You know, you want to make sure that it's the one based in the US and not one based in like uh, in Korea or, you know, England, you know, so I'll see the results and it looks like Bank of America Corporation from the United States. So that looks like our bank. So I'm going to click that. And this is the home page. So you'll see some basic information such as their website, some social media links, and also some key information as well. So you can see what their assets are, how many employees they have, um, and how many years they've been in operation. And you can see here, it's companies with similar revenue. So this is good because you can compare their revenue with, uh, you know, companies such as like the Bank of Baroda India, or better we better yet, their local competitors like Wells Fargo or Chase or Citibank. And you can see um, what industries they're in so that you can look up um, similar jobs in uh, the industry if this one, if you decide not to apply for this one in the end. Go, scrolling down, you'll see information like business description, the information from the latest fiscal year. So I can see that this is updated accordingly and that I'm, I have the latest information. And uh, some basic information on their corporate hierarchy and also, you know, the various banks that they've merged with in the past and also their historical revenue. So here you can project out of these numbers that, hey, it looks like their revenue is growing by a lot. Of course, there's a lot more analysis based on that uh, into whether they're profitable or not, but this is a generally a good first sign. All right. And again, you can see company information like their financials, investment reports, and rankings. Uh, that will usually open up PDFs that you can peruse through at your leisure. And again, so you can start shopping around to make sure you get the best deal and work environment. You can start comparing to, like I said, Chase, Wells Fargo, and Citibank, and other banks in the area as well. Okay. So that is our, uh, that does it for our library resources. And now I'm going to go to some other resources that offer uh, some unique uh, information that, uh, that can help you with your job searching decision. All right, so we're going to start with GuideStar. So again, I was just at Business Resources Essentials, and that's a good place to start if you're looking for a for-profit organization. But what if you're interested in working for a non-profit organization? It can be a little trickier to find information to start building a profile because they may not work with the same performance metrics that a for-profit organization does. Fortunately, there's a resource called GuideStar 
that was created in 1994. And it's one of the world's largest sources of information on nonprofit organizations. So researching your target organization on GuideStar is very similar to Business Insights Essentials. So I'm going to go to GuideStar now. Again, for many of these, um, for most of these resources, uh, making an account is highly recommended because you can use that to unlock a lot of their features that you may not have if you just go on the website and start looking. So again, you probably need a valid email address and maybe some other information to register for an account, but all of these are free to register for and use. So this is the GuideStar homepage. Again, uh, after you make an account, you can just start searching GuideStar for the most complete up-to-date data available. So uh, I'm going to type in the name of a nonprofit organization, uh, one that I one that I like, uh, the World Wildlife Foundation. I'm going to click search. And with that being said, simply locate your desired organization on the results page, and you'll be taken to its information site. So I can see hmm, World Giraffe Foundation, not exactly what I'm looking for. Ah, right here with a panda, World Wildlife Fund, Inc. So this is the one that I'm looking for. I'm just going to click on that. And it will display all of these, all of the information relevant to its operations. So I can see that's located in Washington, DC. I can get a link to its homepage and it will have its mission statement displayed very prominently since it's a nonprofit organization. Um, I'll get uh, some basic information such as who's the principal officer, what subject area that they're working in like natural resources and wildlife biodiversity. And as you scroll down, we can see um, programs and results. So they'll start explaining um, how they're meeting their missions and goals, right? So they're kind of explaining their field programs. And there's some links to external assessments from uh, organizations not connected with this nonprofit so that you can see some assessments and reviews to kind of gauge how others see this organization. And then after that, you can see their own results. So you can see the percentage of spending directed to worldwide conservation. You can see in 2019, they directed 81%. 2020, they directed 83%. And if you scroll even lower, you can see their sustainable development goals and also their strategy that they want. And if this all matches what you, if this kind of matches with your values and what you're looking for uh, in a prospective nonprofit employer, then that can influence your decision to uh, apply and um, hopefully get a job at World Wildlife Foundation or whichever other um, organization you're looking for. All right, next, we're gonna take a look at some other business resources. So Payscale. Payscale is another powerful tool that focuses on salary comparisons. And there are many, many ways that you can research a salary for a potential job on this website. You can look for similar salaries by company, job title, degree, skill, and even the school, which can help you determine if you're being fairly compensated for your position and job duties. So let's go to Payscale. So again, um, and I highly recommend making an account. There's a lot of features that don't work if you don't make an account. All right, so here I'm gonna go to for you and salary research. And as you can see, there are so many options to start looking for this, uh, for your ideal job. All right, so let's actually start with company and let's see how Bank of America does. And again, I just wanna point out, I'm using this as an example. Um, 
I'm not supporting Bank of America in any way. Um, there are many other options for you as well. So I'm going to go with uh, Bank of America Corporation. Okay, and this tells you the average salary for all of the employees of Bank of America. Um, and you can also narrow down what you should be paid if you put in your location data and your years in the field and career, and it will kind of aggregate that and give you a, an average number. All right, and if we go lower, we can find jobs by salary. So we can see, um, you can look for individual dot job titles here. You can see their range and also the average of each job across country. And also you can see some reviews from Bank of America. Um, people like to post um, reviews based on their satisfaction and you can read through these for pros and cons. Again, this is the internet. So take everything that's being said with a grain of salt and remember to do your own research. All right, so from here, I'm gonna look for jobs by salary. Let's take a look at relationship banker. And as I type that in, it comes up. So I'm gonna click that. And I see that the range is 35 to 61 and the average is 43. So I'm gonna click on that. So this will give you um, some more details you can see the average base hourly rate. You can see job details. Again, it will kind of explain what, uh, what they do, what their tasks are, much like the Occupation Outlook Handbook. And I can take a look at the skills required. Okay, so for example, like customer service, banking, sales, customer relations. And then again, you can take a look at some other job listings in the area if um, the Bank of America one isn't, uh, isn't your cup of tea. And also, you take a look at some employers around the area that list relationship banker jobs. All right, so uh, now I'm going to scroll back to the top. Besides salary research, there's some good resources as well, like such as their salary negotiation guide. So that's uh, under the resources tab here. And this offers a lot of resources for people who might not know how to start negotiating their salary or benefits. Um, this provides a good guide. So if you're negotiating your salary for the first time, or if you haven't done it before, uh, there's some handy articles here that will give you some guidance uh, on how to exactly go about doing that with uh, a potential employer. Okay. And next we have Glassdoor. So Glassdoor, it's a great job finding and researching tool that has a few unique features. So it was founded in 2007 and it's an American website where current and former employees can, can anonymously review companies. And Glassdoor also allows the users to submit and view salaries as well as search and apply for jobs on its platform. Now, it not only lets you do that, but has features including company profiles, salaries, and best of all, interviews. So the amount of information here lets people review companies they've been employed at and share information like salaries and benefits, um, so, and also for the interviews, you can see what people share about their interview experience with this company. So let's take a look at that. Okay. And I'm going to go to Glassdoor. Uh, again, highly rec recommend making a profile. So here, I'm gonna take a look at um, jobs. So I'm gonna take a look at relationship banker I'm going to take a look. All right, and it'll give you a listing of the jobs. Again, uh, you can kind of see uh, which jobs are available and you can also apply for them as well. 
All right. So you can also discover companies. So I'm going to go to companies and discover companies. And I'm going to look for Bank of America. And take a look at that. All right, and again, you'll get a lot of information about this company, um, including uh, any reviews they have, over 30,000, how many jobs they they have listed, that's over 4,000. You can take a look at salaries, interviews, benefits, and also some photos as well. All right, so let's actually take a look at reviews. So we're gonna scroll down and you can see um, some reviews from employees, and you can see that it's on average a four out of five. So it indicates that this company might be a decent place to work for. Okay, as we scroll down, you get to see some photos of workplaces and uh, office buildings. And the best part is interviews. So we're gonna go to the interviews part. So here you can see what people submitted. You can see that 68% had a positive interview experience compared with 11% negative and also 21% neutral. And you can see that the majority of people who got an interview applied online. And you can see they rated the interview difficulty about average. So not too hard, not too easy. Okay, and as we scroll down, you can see uh, how people describe their interviews as well and the process they went through. So you can see their application process and also how their interview went and also most important, their interview questions. So this can really help you um, when you're preparing for an interview with a company by looking at all the questions they ask for your for that specific position and coming up with your answers beforehand. And that prep, that preparation can make the difference in whether or not your um, interview goes successfully or not. All right, I see for example, relationship banker interview, um, and you can just take a look at why, at all of the information and incorporate that into the job profile. All right, and also another thing, you can compare companies. So if I go to compare companies, you can actually compare the numbers side by side. Okay, so let's say Bank of America, I want to compare that with, oh, Wells Fargo. All right, and once I click that, you can kind of see if you find a job listing for a relationship banker at Wells Fargo, you can do a quick comparison here to see how the numbers um, stack up. So you can see for Bank of America, it's got a four rating compared with a 3.6 for Wells Fargo based on roughly the same amount of reviews. You can see it's ranked consistently higher in career opportunities, compensation, work-life balance, even senior management. So all of this might affect whether or not you decide to take an offer if they both offer you uh, their position, uh, the information here might point you toward Bank of America instead of Wells Fargo. All right. So one more source of information that you should check about a potential employer or company is the news. So just go to any news website, such as the Associated Press, CNN, or ABC, or just use Google and search for news on that company. If you are using Google, make sure to click the news filter to, um, to get uh, purely the news and not any non-news related items. While most organizational news results would revolve around company performance and earnings, don't discount stories or headlines um, that might tip your decision one way or the other. For example, let's say you're considering applying for a position at Apple, but you really care about an issue like data privacy. So I would do a quick news search for Apple online. Uh, let's see, so here I would Apple employee uh, privacy, and I maybe 
iCloud. And here I would get this news article, Apple cares about privacy unless you work at Apple. So, um, you know, this might be like, oh, so employees believe that Apple doesn't protect their data privacy. Or so what this might tell me is that Apple has different standards about consumer privacy and employee privacy as well. And if I felt strongly about this issue, it could influence me one way or the other. I might reconsider applying to a company whose values don't align with mine, or I might have extra motivation to apply for this position and try to change the corporate culture from within. And it all depends on what your opinions, values, and ambitions are. So a quick news search could also help reveal any immediate red flags a company has, like the Enron scandal a while back that would make working at a prospective employer a hard pass. Okay, so today we learn how to get basic details about a job listing, uh, look up information on the occupation and companies involved, and take a look at the viability of the salaries and what some interview tips for the companies are. So keep in mind that most of these platforms can also apply for jobs and require an email to create an account before all their features can be used. So we have all this information, how do we make it actionable or put it to good use? And the most common way to make use of this information is to have it help you decide whether or not you want to keep pursuing this job. When all the little things add up, such as salary, benefits, work environment, and duties, it gives you a clearer picture that can help you decide if it's what you really want. Now, once you decide to apply for a suitable job, you can also use the information you gain to help impress during a job interview by asking questions or making comments relating to that information, remarking on a new initiative the company recently started, or saying how you can best help strengthen a company's area that might need improvement demonstrates to the employer that you are a self-starter and have initiative and motivation that could benefit their organization. Now, if you make it past the interview stage and the company starts the negotiating the starting package, congratulations. One of the most important aspects you can negotiate on is the salary. There are some hard numbers out there that you can refer to during a salary negotiation with an employer, such as uh, the numbers on pay scale. If the job you're applying for is offering you less than, say, a direct competitor, you can directly point that out and use that as a sticking point in the salary negotiation. Or if another company offers a better benefits package, that could be leveraged to push for a better position at the benefits table. And that's just some of the ways you can put your research to good use. It may seem like a daunting task at first, but it will become second nature once you start researching and building profiles for a couple of job listings. Now, if there's just two things I want you to remember from this presentation, it's to do your own research and that knowledge is power. I hope this has helped you and I wish you good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Any Lawrence. Questions, uh, please place them in the chat. So I've got a few questions that have uh, cropped up. So the first question is on Cal Jobs. Uh, uh, can I also filter my jobs to be a uh, part-time? Uh, yes, you definitely can. Um, so there are options on Cal Jobs to filter positions for full-time, part-time, um, and also uh, like internships or temporary jobs as well. Excellent. So the next question is, um, what about tools or resources for government jobs? Actually, I have a good one for this one. Uh, there's yeah, a website, governmentjobs.com. Actually, it's, it's such a simple thing, but a lot of governments use governmentjobs.com to post their um, their job links. Um, what else do you have, Lawrence? Um, yeah, so uh, like all I just said, governmentjobs.com, and also in the our Tools for Job Seekers page, um, you can see there's um, California state jobs and also USA jobs. Those are good if you want to look for jobs in the state government of California and also for the federal government at USA jobs as well. 
and also for LA County, uh, LA County Human Resources. Definitely LA County. Yeah, most government websites, yeah, will have their their jobs posted on there. But government jobs, yeah, brings them all together. Let me see what other questions I have. And if folks, you have any other questions that they're just cropping up in your mind now, feel free to post them and we'll cover them. So here's a question that you may or may not be able to answer, Lawrence. Um, a person asks, I have a math major. What job can I do besides teaching? Okay. Um, well, for a math major, uh, let's take a look at the Occupational Outlook Handbook, and that might give us more insight on what to do. So, as you can see for occupation groups, there's a math section that I can click on, and it will give you occupations that deal with math. So, here, besides mathematician and statistician, I can find in actuaries and operations research and analysts, which might give you more choices uh, for your math major. So the next question is, is LinkedIn a good website to find a job as well? Um, so LinkedIn does have some good uh, job searching resources. Um, I would definitely recommend it for networking which is connecting with um, professionals and you can ask them questions about their about their field and most of them would probably give you a, a, an answer. Um, let's see, let's take a look for LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn does def definitely has job listing. They have a job board that's um, like Indeed or any other ZipRecruiter. They also have a job board on there with a lot of people. Some of the, some of the jobs are similar. You know, many companies will post like at Indeed, at LinkedIn, at ZipRecruiter and all the popular um, job listing sites. In fact, most of the jobs will also appear on CalJobs. Hmm. Well, uh, yeah, like LinkedIn uh, is a, another good resource to use if you're looking for a job. We have another uh, question about a specific area. Um, Chloe asks, uh, what types of jobs can I do with a degree in geography? I wonder Ooh. what occupational career handbook says about that. That's an interesting one. Yeah, let's take a look. So geography. Um, hmm. So let's actually search for that since it's not an obvious category. But uh, ah, right here, geographers, cartographers, and photogrammetrists, geoscientists, and also post-secondary teachers, serving and mapping technicians. So if you don't find exactly what you're looking for, just go ahead and type that in uh, to the search um, to the search bar, and it should give you a list of occupations related to geography. That's also, there's also a good, that's just a good Google search. Just find jobs with geography major. And there's a lot of websites. I just I actually just did it because I was curious and a lot of different, in fact, during in one of those questions that Google automatically plays up, I, I clicked on it and it got a whole bunch of different career options. Ge the geography degree is really interesting. So I'm looking at the different questions here. What are job resources for disabled mature or mature adults or disabled and mature adults? Okay, uh, so for so for uh, mature adults or older adults, um, the library has a link to Workforce 50. So this is um, so this is career resources for boomers and seniors. So um, whoever posts listings on this job site. They're um, looking specifically for boomers and seniors. So to look for a job here, you would just go to Workforce 50 Jobs and uh, go ahead and start searching. Another good resource they have is the Workforce 50 Library, which has um, like resources such as articles, 
uh, like resume writing and career writing and how to optimize your LinkedIn profile for boomers and seniors and older adults in general. Somebody uh, had just asked, where do I go to find a bilingual Spanish, gov Spanish uh, government position? I was, gonna, I was just typing in a response. Um, and I don't know, Lawrence, do you know of any website that where you can, where you specifically positions that are bilingual? Um, what I was thinking is that if you go to a job search site, for example, like governmentjobs.com, and in their search box, you might put bilingual, and then it'll come up with the positions where in the job description, it lists bilingual. Uh, yes. Um, so there are positions um, like in government jobs or even Cal jobs that will specifically list bilingual in their um, in their requirements or recommendations. Like um, the, I remember combing through the Bank of America listings. They have a couple of positions they mark out very clearly as bilingual. So whenever you're looking for the job, just go ahead and type in bilingual. Or if there's a field. Um, that asks, you know, what languages are you would uh, like to do? You could probably check uh, your preferred language there. Thanks, Lawrence. So I have a we had a question about uh, looking for nonprofits. Another person about looking for nonprofit jobs, and actually I have a response for that. And in addition, so there is a website called ProPublic. I'm going to post the link in the chat. Um, so that anybody who's interested can also look at that. Um, ProPublica has a lot of information about exploring nonprofits. And, and I should mention that we're going to have a nonprofit panel. Uh, so if anybody out there is looking into getting jobs in the nonprofit sector later on during this session, um, we're gonna have a some three veteran nonprofit practitioners, people who have been working for a long time in nonprofits, and they'll share all their experiences with us. And if you go to the Work Ready webpage, that'll be listed probably later on today, and you could register for that. So let me see what other questions we have here. I think we're getting close to our time here, but I think we can probably do a few more. So I, we, I see there's a lot of questions about very specific uh, jobs, you know, how do I find X job? How do I find Y job? And the way you do that, th there's no way we can cover each of those very specific uh, questions during this session. But the way you would do that is you would go to a job board and type in that job title. And if you go to Cal Jobs, like Lawrence was saying, sometimes there's also uh, in the description other job titles that are related to that, or in the Occupational Career Handbook, similar job titles. And then you just type that into the different job boards. So let me see what we have here. So there's a question, should we expect nonprofits to pay at the same level as for-profit companies when negotiating a salary? That's an excellent question. And that actually, that's something we're definitely going to be covering during the nonprofit panel. And the answer to that is it depends on the nonprofit. For large nonprofits like the Lung Association or the Heart Association, um, they will, yeah, they pay rates that are similar to um, to what you know private sector companies do. But just like a very small business might not be able to pay as much as a giant company, tiny nonprofits will probably not be paying as much as you know, large companies or either large nonprofits or large for-profit companies. Um, somebody asked whether we, we have a resume workshop. Um, we could have a resume. We've actually done a few resume programs. Um, if you, I'm gonna post the link to our YouTube channel. We've had a we've had a couple of different resume programs that you can look at for information about resumes, and we will be having resume workshops in the future. So I'm gonna post the link to our. Sorry, Lawrence, I, I'm, I'm sort of hogging all the questions here, um, but I've got a few things that I can post. So here's the link to our YouTube channel. And if you look in that playlist, um, you'll see that there's, a, there's at least two programs about resumes. And so let me see if there's any other questions that we haven't covered yet. Okay. 
Uh, somebody asked, will there be any future webinars for interview preparation? There will, yes. Um, we have a we have one coming up, not this session, but in the next session, specifically about using public speaking skills for interviews, and that will definitely include a section on preparation. And we'll also, I put in the link to our YouTube channel. We've had programs on interviewing before, and uh, I would highly recommend watching those videos because those they ha they have some really good information on interviewing. All right, so. Like I've mentioned, we've got, we've had a few other questions coming in that are very specific to jobs. Like if I have this degree, or if I if I need a job in this field, and like I mentioned, that's something that you would want to go to the occupational career handbook and look at. Um, or the other option is you know, kind of a simple option is to just Google jobs with this major, jobs with this degree, and you'll get you'll get a really nice list. Um, if you look at like the first few links. I mean, you will literally be able to combine, put together a list, and then just look at the look at the job boards and look at those job descriptions and see if that's something that you have the skills for, or you can gain the skills for. I think we're. Let me see what else we have here. I think we're. I think we're good. I think Lawrence that uh, we've covered the questions that we can cover today. All right, Lawrence, thank you very much for sharing the useful information that you provided in a, in a calm, articulate, and clear way. Um, I've, I definitely learned something today, and I hope that the folks out there have as well. So much appreciated.